Welcome to the yet another session of the clinical scenarios and this is your case number 20. Here we have a 5 year old Caucasian female, right? She is brought to the office with several months history of decreased visual acuity and also decreased brightness sensation in one eye that is right eye. Slight exophthalmos also of the same eye and ophthalmoscopy shows pallor of the right optic disc. Then we have got several cafe oil spots with the intensive axillary freckling. Which of the following is the most likely cause of this patient's visual problems? The options are pigment retinitis that is your retinitis pigmentosa. Second, retinal hematomas, C, optic glioma and D, pituitary adenoma. So, what is this condition? Now, let us try to summarize what is the information that is given in the question. I think this is a very classical question uh, which is testing your so many concepts and it is also testing the integrated knowledge because they are saying cafe all spots, Axillary freckling, visual acuity decreased, brightness sensation decreased, exophthalmos is also there, pallor of the optic disc is also there. So, there are so many things which are associated. So, this is a history of a 5 year female which is giving you several months history. So, this is a chronic diminution of vision chronic condition several months is there along with the decreased brightness sensation. So, we have got decreased uh, vision also and then we have got the decreased brightness also. So, can you tell me what is uh, the implication? Now, brightness feature is a feature of your optic disc. So, this gives us some clue that uh, maybe there is some problem with the optic disc because you know diminution of vision is also there as well as the brightness sensation also disturbed. Now, if you are thinking in terms of optic Optic neuritis beware because you know optic neuritis is a acute condition it will cause uh, uh, the uh, problems which are acute and moreover um, that will also lead to so many other problems right. Now they are saying that exophthalmos is also there. Now will optic neuritis lead to exophthalmos? No. Okay, so optic neuritis is not mainly leading to the exophthalmos. Then they are saying that there is also pallor of the optic disc. Okay, now if you think that uh, maybe this is a case of optic neuritis, though it is not given in the option, so that solves your mystery. But let me discuss you about this optic neuritis. See, optic neuritis will cause the sudden profound profound very very severe sudden profound unilateral diminution of vision so that is a sudden now I, here i have not commented on pain because you know sometimes there can be pain sometimes it is not there but um, if i talk about the rbn rbn may mainly we have the retro orbital pain Okay, that is there. Now, if I have to make out whether it can be RBN or it can be optic neuritis of the papillitis type or neuroretinitis type. So, you should remember that uh, the causes, the causes of optic neuritis may the most common is MS that is your multiple sclerosis, right. And the optic neuritis is of three types. Which three types? We have got one that is your... Uh, papillitis right then we have the neuroretinitis and third is retrobulbar neuritis now if i am talking about the common scenario the optic neuritis is commonly related with the multiple sclerosis but multiple sclerosis do not give you neuroretinitis so that means mainly i am concerned with the papillitis or the retrobulbar neuritis now papillitis is more common in the children while in cases of adults we are going to get the 
retro bulb neuritis so basically i am not concerned with the retro bulb neuritis also i have to think if i am thinking about the optic neuritis in terms of the papillitis now papillitis is a acute condition this will not lead to the uh, several months history second important thing I will not get the exophthalmos. I will not get the exophthalmos in cases of papillitis. So that is also going against. Number three, they are saying that we have the pallor of the optic disc. So I will not get the pallor of the optic disc also. Rather, what kind of optic disc I will get? In the papillitis, I will get the hyperemic disc. Hyperemic disc with the blurred margins. Hyperemic disc with the blurred margins margins so there is lot of evidence to rule out the optic neuritis if you are thinking in terms of because you know the clinical picture is quite different moreover they are saying the cafe olive spots they are saying the axillary freckling so that is again not related with the optic neuritis so what is actually uh, the protocol then so let me see the other options first they are talking about the retinitis pigmentosa can it be a case of retinitis pigmentosa now if i talk about uh, retinitis pigmentosa okay it is the most common hereditary dystrophy it is the most common hereditary dystrophy which is actually present in the rpe layer right and it is affecting the photoreceptors it is also affecting the photoreceptors that is rods and the cones so basically it is not affecting the optic disc it is affecting the rods and cones okay second important thing which will rule out retinitis pigmentosa is that that is more common in males males may it is much more common and plus uh, if you look at the constant triad how will this patient present the patient will typically present with the night blindness so usually you will get a family history childhood history and in male it is common then it is a bilateral condition while here they are telling uh, constantly that the problem is only in the right eye okay and also it is a symmetrical condition so here you know optic disc involved if at all is there in the retinitis pigmentosa the what is that so what is the trite that you are getting the first thing is that you get the pale yellow pale yellow waxy optic disc so here you get the pale yellow waxy optic disc okay so one thing is going in favor that you have a pale disc but that should be bilateral there should be a family history more common in males symmetrical condition uh, history of night blindness right all these things are not there then we have the pigmentary spicules so they are also not there the three things which are very very important for making the diagnosis of the retinitis pigmentosa the pigmentary spicules then what are the thing the attenuation then we also have the attenuation of the retinal arterioles attenuation of the retinal arterioles so you are not having any of these triad which is actually important for making the diagnosis of retinitis pigmentosa okay so now let us see what is the other thing the retinal hematomas so see what happens why actually they have given you retinal hematomas because you know uh, can you tell me where do you get this cafe all the spots and intensive axillary freckling what do you uh, think what is reminding you about the cafe all its spots what is this so this is very very important neurofibromatosis especially the neurofibromatosis one so this is a neurocutaneous syndrome which leads to the cafe all its spots and the axillary freckling now what is this uh, uh, neurofibromatosis they are the phacomatosis or the neurocutaneous syndromes which are presenting with the ocular manifestations so let me discuss that so there are certain conditions which are called as phacomatosis or the neurocutaneous syndromes which have the systemic features and they are presenting with the ocular symptomatology also so most important is that 
we have the neurofibromatosis. So, what are the things that I am getting? Apart from these cafe or spots, apart from this uh, freckling, what are the ocular manifestations? That is your Lish nodules. Can you see this? These brownish nodules, these are called as Lish nodules and these are actually the iris hematomas. They are not the retinal hematomas. So, in the question they have said that uh, the patient has cafe or spots and the patient has the axillary freckling. So, that is going with the diagnosis of neurofibromatosis which shows the iris hematomas and not the retinal hematomas, right? Then along with this, and the patient also have the neurofibromas. Neurofibromas of the lid can be there. Neurofibromas of the orbit can be there. And a very, very important finding for this question is the optic nerve gliomas. So, this patient who is having the cafe spots, who is having the axillary freckling, right, having a problem on one side of the eye, one side optic nerve problem. So, what it can be? It can be the neurofibromatosis along with this optic nerve gliomas which are present in 15% of the patients. Now, it is making sense. So, if the patient has developed this optic nerve gliomas, okay, what is happening? It will cause the compression of that optic nerve. Compression of the optic nerve will lead to the pallor of the optic disc. It will affect the brightness sensation also. It will affect the vision also. It will lead to the pallor of the optic disc. Yes or no? And it also leads to the proptosis. It leads to the enlargement of the optic foramen. A very, very important thing. And if you see the um, radiological findings, that will give you the enlargement of the optic foramina and obviously it is leading to the proptosis. So, the finding of proptosis is actually justified by this optic nerve glioma. Then we can also have the congenital glaucoma. Now, what are the other conditions which are there in the phacomatosis which can also present with the ocular symptoms? We have the Sturge Weber syndrome. Sturge Weber syndrome, this has been asked separately also. The most important ocular manifestation of the Sturge Weber syndrome is a congenital glaucoma. Then, what you are getting there, see, I have made a mnemonic for you people. Remember the SCH, S for Sturge Weber, C for choroidal, and H for hemangioma. So, always remember that in the Sturge Weber syndrome, you have the what choroidal hemangiomas, right? Then we have tuberous sclerosis. <coughs> now, in tuberous sclerosis, actually, we get this retinal hematomas which are given in the question. While the uh, diagnosis of tuberous sclerosis cannot be made by the cafe or spots and the axillary freckles, the diagnosis of the tuberous sclerosis is made by the stride. How to remember the triad? The HRT, hormone replacement therapy that you give in the uh, females, postmenopausal females. So, we have got what? We have got the uh, HRT therapy. What is this T? T is your tuberous sclerosis, right? R for we have retardation, okay? R for retardation and then we have got the H. H is the hematomas. So, we have retinal hematomas. R for retardation, mental retardation is also there. R for retinal and H for hematomas. So, tuberous sclerosis shows you retinal hematomas while the uh, Sturge Weber syndrome was showing you the choroidal hemangiomas. So, retinal hematomas will not be the right answer here. Then we have the worn von hippel lindo syndrome that is also included in this uh, phacomatosis. Now, what you are getting here, V for von hippel, A and R, that is your retinal angiomatosis. So, you have got different findings, ocular findings that you are getting in different phacomatosis and likewise you have to correlate. Now, when you have got these angiomatosis, they are actually leading to the tortuosity, dilatation and you know what is related with the, uh, whenever there is some abnormality in the vessels, like that occurs in the Coates disease. So, what is common there? We have the exudative RT. So, that 
is uh, leading to the exudative RD and not the optic disc problem. So that means we have already ruled out the retinitis pigmentosa in this patient. We have also ruled out the retinal hematomas in this patient because retinal hematomas were there in the tuberous sclerosis. Okay. Then optic glioma was explained. Now what about the pituitary adenoma? What will be happening if uh, I am dealing a patient who is having the pituitary adenoma? So pituitary adenoma is a condition which will be compressing the optic chiasma, right? And because it is compressing the optic chiasma, what you are going to get? You will get the bitemporal. So, you will get the bitemporal hemianopia. So, there will be a typical kind of vision loss that you will be getting in this patient that will be bitemporal hemianopia. Now, that is a separate story. If you remember, I told you that uh, if this is your uh, chiasma like, okay, something like this. So, there is a uh, one uh, two sides of this optic chiasma so this can be compressed from this side also and this can be compressed from this side also so on the above we have got the wrap case pouch in which you can have the craniopharyngioma craniopharyngioma will be compressing from the upper side and pituitary adenoma is compressing from the inferior side so, how does it make a difference? See, always remember cranio is towards head, pituitary P for pedal. So, pedal is on the lower side. So, what you are getting here, when you are compressing the superior fiber, so you will be getting the problem on the inferior side. So, I will be having bitemporal, bitemporal, homonemous, homonemous, uh, quadrant tenopia. Okay, and which side? Now, because it is compressing the superior fibers, this will be on inferior side, inferior side. Okay, similarly, the pituitary, okay, pituitary is compressing from inferior side. So, inferior fibers will affect the superior one. So, this will cause the superior. Same, Baki, that is bitemporal on the superior side. So, that is a further significance of this pituitary adenoma. So, now you are very very clear that this is actually a case of the optic glioma. So, the optic glioma can occur in a female 5 year old giving you several months history because you know tumors cannot grow overnight. That will affect the optic disc. So, there will be diminution of vision also. Decreased brightness sensation is there and it leads to the enlargement of optic foramina. It will um, protrude the eye. It will push the eye forward. So, there will be axial proptosis and the pallor of the optic disc will also be there. And moreover, it is common along with the neurofibromatosis. So, patient will have the cafe olive spots and the axillary freckling, right? In case of any doubt, you people can always ping me up at any of my social media platforms. If you like the video, if you think that you are being benefited by this video, please help others also whom you think that uh, they are also in the NEET preparation or FMG preparation or MLE preparation because you know even the FMG exam is, has given you so many clinical scenarios, lots of images. So, I think that is the need of the R. You have to develop that clinical approach of uh, solving the questions. Please do share uh, these videos. Please like and subscribe the videos because that gives us uh, the motivation of developing more videos. And um, you can also visit to my Facebook group and Facebook page. I hope you people are enjoying the daily quizzes on my Telegram channel and Telegram group. Keep studying hard, be safe, be healthy and do lots of hard work. Thank you and happy ophthalmology.